Today we are going to take a look at random forest and one hot encoding. Okay, let's start with just a quick look at how random forests perform by default. When I say by default, I mean without any fine tuning. So what I want to do, if you go to the GitHub Pact Publishing website for the hands-on gradient boosting with XGBoost and Scikit-Learn book that this class is partially based on, and you click on chapter two, okay? Then you can get the link to this um, heart disease data set, okay? So recall that to actually load it, you would click on it and then hit the view raw, okay, that changes the URL, and then copy that in, command C, okay? I go back to the new Colab notebook and I put it in as the URL in quotes. And now I go ahead and just load it up. Okay. We've done this before and you can find it even, um, you know, if you've been taking this class in the previous notebook, I've got two up and I think this was this decision tree tuned. Yeah, we tuned this one. Okay. So you can also open that Colab notebook of your own and copy in those first four cells, okay? So it's import pandas as pd, and then df equals pd.read underscore csv with the URL, and then we always look at the first five rows to check out the data, okay? And let's go ahead and title the notebook. So this is gonna be random forests, and I'm gonna combine it with one hot encoding which you could abbreviate O-H-E, O-H-E. Okay, so these are the different categories of patients, right? Age 63, sex one without the key, I don't know if it's male or female, chest pain three, um, a lot of terms I don't know. You can always go to the, look up the heart disease get, um, data set via the UCI machine learning repository to get details on the meaning of these. And the target one would mean indication of presence, yes, heart disease, zero, no heart disease, okay? So what I want to do is just kind of just build a random forest and like see how it scores this, okay? And I would like to have some kind of baseline of comparison. So if we look at the decision tree tuned, okay, we didn't start by tuning it. We started by just running a decision tree um, classifier, and we got a cross-validation score of you know, 74%, okay? So that was the default decision tree, that's one single tree. And then later, we actually worked on fine-tuning it, and we got upwards of, if you scroll down, I recall seeing, yeah, about like 80, about 82.5, you know, percent. So pretty good, really. And Let's just compare that to see how a random force will do by default. Okay, so, and then we'll talk a little bit about what it is. So to go ahead and run a random forest, you've got to, um, you know, locate it. And so it's in the from sklearn dot, it's an ensemble. Okay, an ensemble, what that means, it's an ensemble of machine learning models. So random force is a lot of decision trees. And then we can import random forest. Now you have to think to yourself, is it classifier or regressor? Well, the target comment we're trying to predict is heart disease or not. That's classification, so we want classifier. Okay. Now let's go ahead and use cross file score. So from sklearn. I believe it's model selection, import cross val score. Okay, and we're just doing a quick score on it. So Let's go ahead and do it. So you would build a random forest classifier the same way you would build really any classifier, okay? So if you want, you can say, you can initialize it, model equals random forest classifier, and then you can put it inside of cross file score. So we could say that the scores because it's plural, okay? Do cross file score and the input is then the model. And then, you know, we've had like other, you know, we, we used other 
parameters before, okay? Like you can change the number of folds, like CV equals five, and um, let's change the scoring, right? So scoring by default is typically accuracy. So, so these two are what they are by default. That's gonna give us five scores, and then we can just look at, say, the mean, okay? So this should work. Um, chunk of code, like, let's see. Press shift enter. Yeah, it got an error. Oh, because I haven't split the data into X and Y. You know, I, I do this as I quickly jump into the machine learning model. So, you know, that's fine, right? <laughs> it's gonna happen. You forget something requ requires positional argument X. Okay, so it should have, I guess after the model, like an X and a Y, we haven't specified, and there it is up there, you know, if you start typing it in, X comma Y, we haven't said what X and Y are, so if I put in X and Y here, well, that's not gonna do anything. I actually need to split the data. Okay, so we'll go back up to before the model and now split the data. And hopefully you can do this on your own now. You shouldn't really need my help. Um, there's not one way to split the data. It's just knowing like what it is, like X is everything except the predictor column. I'm sorry, the target column, which is last here. So I can say X equals DF dot I lock brackets, all rows, all columns, except for the last one. And then Y is df.iloc, all rows, and only the last column. Okay, so that separates out the X and the Y. But then when I say things like it should work, I'm almost like a little uncertain, <laughs> you know, should meaning like there's a little doubt. All right, and look at that. So this, this is compelling. Okay, right, 82.8%. So one random forest classifier without any fine tuning is defeating the tuned decision tree that we spent all this time working on. And so immediately, at least for me, what comes to mind is, okay, why is random forest so much better? If it's, is it, is it just, it's just a bunch of decision trees? Do ensembles always perform that much better? Um, I want to say yes and yes, right? It is a bunch of decision trees and it, on average, it, then it is going to perform better. But I think let's, let's just take a moment to talk about what a random forest actually does. Okay, so what does a random forest actually do? I'm going to put it in a text cell here. Okay, so and maybe even move it up. Okay, so it's above the random forest piece. And and give it a, maybe a sub, no, we'll give it a header. Ran, random forest. Okay, so what do they do? Um, they do the following. And note, note that I can, look, they have like little like things you can, like I can try bullet points, for instance, if I want. See, and it's setting up. You can see the left side is the code and the right side is how it looks. So what do random forests do? Okay. Random forest combine many decision trees, okay? Now, subtle point here, okay? You ready? If each of the decision trees were the same, there's no point in doing a random forest, okay? Why? Because each score would, would be the same. The, the key here is to get different scores with different decision trees. So how that's done each decision tree is selected from a random number of rows. Okay, you could also call those samples, same thing. Right, this is the idea. Um, so random forest combined many decision trees, but each decision tree is going to be different. Okay, and, and, and I don't know exactly what it is. Um, Note if I press return, I need to fill in the syntax on my own. So you gotta, yeah, th th these, you know, the phone space F double space period I like on the phone, not for collab. Okay, so I, I think and th there are, each tree is about, I, I, I we can look it up, it's something like two thirds or three fourths 
of the um, rows. Okay, so that is really kind of the key. All right, so so let's let's look at the data here. All right, so here we have all this data, and instead of building a decision tree on every single row, what the random forest does is says, hey, I'm just going to randomly pick two thirds of the rows, okay, and build a decision tree. But the next time I'm going to randomly pick a different two thirds of the rows, right? It's random. So some rows are the same, some aren't. And so what you end up getting is a model that's going to generalize well because it's only selecting certain rows, but in some, it, there's, it by default it uses like 100 decision trees. It's including all the rows multiple times. So do you see how that's going to generalize well and not overfit? If it's one decision tree, as we saw before, it greatly overfits, right? Because it finds all these nuances of, to, to make it match perfectly. But this isn't going to do that because it's combining the results from all the different rows. Now, here, here's a nice way I like to look at it, okay? Um, so, when you look at classification, so how about this? The random forest... gives an incorrect prediction, this is for classification, okay? Only if the majority of decision trees are wrong. Why? Because, let's push shift in order on that, because, right, just, just imagine like, like our actual data where you have heart disease, not heart disease. So again, there's about a hundred de decision trees here, okay? And they're trying to predict say row zero, right? Um, what's the prediction gonna be, one or zero? Okay, so, so what the random force is doing, right? It's building a model, or each decision tree, okay? It's building a model and the model is based on all the splits and is trying to fit the best predictions for all, the, all of the rows. Okay, so that's like one case of the random force, one decision tree. And so when it looks at the results of each row, if we consider one of them, say row zero, um, it's gonna give a certain prediction, right? The goal is to predict one, of course. Well, because we're only looking at two thirds of the rows, you're gonna get different splits and different decision trees. And some are gonna predict one for that row and some are gonna predict zero. But when the N, what the random force will do is it'll take the average of, well, it takes the average really for regression. It's going to take the majority for classification. Okay, it ends up being the same. So meaning if, you know, like 70 of the decision trees predict one there and 30 predict zero, then it's going to predict one. So therein is the big advantage. The majority rules with random force. Okay. So... That's just a little overview of random forests and how they work. Um, I'll add in here 100 by default. We can change the number of trees. Okay, we'll learn how to do that. That's a big hyperparameter to change. And um, it's also used as something called bagging, which stands for bootstrap, bootstrap aggregation. So it aggregates many decision trees and it basically bootstraps them, which has to do with how it, it randomly selects the rows. So each decision tree is selected from a random number of rows. When I see each decision tree is selected, that's not the right phrasing. Each decision tree is built. Um, You know, each tree is, it's not, you know, sometimes when I write these on the fly, they're only so compelling. Each decision tree is built from a random number of rows. That's true, but each tree is about two thirds or three fourths of the rows. And it is, let's say it contains. Okay, so I'm just giving you like a little idea of how random forest works within code. You know, that I can try to add, add a link to a slideshow on this as well. And just note this, like, look, here, here's, here's how I leave it in my mind. Like, 
there's not really a good reason to use a decision tree individually. Sure, you can find isolated cases, but the bottom line is that random forests are often going to work. Random forests are legitimate rivals to XGBoost. They are very strong machine learning models, and they work very well, as you can see, by default.